Welcome back to Opera's Hot Rods. <clears throat> We're gonna attempt to uh, film in sequence here. Chronologically filming. Meaning, <clears throat> when I unload this van, of all the junk in it, <clears throat> before I set up a light or anything, I first have to uh, unload the tripod. I took it with me on this last trip. I never used it, but I loaded it and unloaded it probably four times. So let's get the uh, garage door open, let a little light in here and uh, start cleaning it out. Mm. And we'll get some music going. So, uh, you know, cue the music. <laughs> So why build a behemoth van? Well, stuff. If you got a lot of stuff, then you need a place to put a, put a lot of stuff. There's like holes in this shirt. <sighs> why build a van? To hold all your junk. If you got a lot of junk, just think of it as a big trunk. I'm planning to film this episode in sequence, but I'm still gonna trim a lot of fat out of it, so as I pull things out, it'll probably be kind of jumpy, but I'm just going to identify all the stuff that I'm pulling out in case you're wondering, what does somebody carry with them on a typical road trip? My DeWalt circular saw. I like the DeWalt tools. It's 20 volt, brushless. So you don't brush things with this. This is mainly for cutting. And this is what's called the Atomic Series. And they call it that because it sounds cool. It has no, I'm not sure why they call it that. Very super handy and very portable. This is the larger battery, but super portable little thing. I like this guy. Did not intend to leave this in the van. This is my mobile office, portable office. I think this is an Eddie Bauer brand thing, but it is super, super convenient. It's got a clipboard on the top, pockets, file dividers. I love this thing. Now here we have tripods. Short one for low angles and under the car. Just another regular tripod besides the one I use because now I have an iPad I may be able to do camera A, camera B. Ooh, hold on, I got an idea. When I get the uh, video bag out, I'll set up a camera A, camera B, and show you why I have the extra tripod. My electrical tools, mostly like for, um, you know, electrical tools. extra compressor. I don't know what's blooming. It's October and something's blooming or mold sporing or something's killing my sinuses. This thing is full of all the parts for the A-Team van. Interior parts and other stuff. Fog lights. This is an A-Team right on it. And uh, I thought I was going to have time to work on this thing on this trip. I was wrong. I like bags and boxes. This, this is my uh, video bag that contains uh, some lights and another little tripod, other mounts. And uh, oh, here's the one for my iPad. Hold on, let me show you the thing. These things just clip on. This has a, uh, a little level built right in it, which is kind of nice. And that way, there's your pan tilt zoom, 
If you've never used a tripod, this is how hard it is to do. Not. That's it, tripod ready to go. Let me grab the... Uh, I've never tried using this with this case on here, but I, honestly, I think it'll probably work, work okay. Just to squish it down. I mean, it's not like I'm gonna be throwing it across the room. Well, what do I just say? Let's see what happens. We have to uh, change it though. Let's turn the thing on. So I never had an iPad before. Um, it's diabolically similar to the iPhone in all respects that I have discovered so far. So let's just crank down on that. Let's just do that. Let's, all right. So we can put this here, go video. Ah, video this way. So, now with this, I can have camera one and camera number two. Where's the camera on this thing? Right here, okay. So I should probably put something there so I know I'm looking at the camera so I don't look like I'm wall-eyed. All right, let me clean that off. There, it's a little better. Now, <clears throat> camera one, camera two. Camera one, camera two. Camera two, camera one. Um, let's go camera two over here. This bag. This bag has my recording studio in it. I don't know, you're thinking, recording studio, what are you talking about? Well, remember I put a little bit of guitar music over one of my time-lapse things? Well, I went down the rabbit hole. Now I want to do guitar music over anything I do time-lapse. I might just start putting guitar music just randomly wherever I feel like it. I'll put some right now. I to actually put it on here, it's going to look stupid. Okay. Anyway, you get the idea. But I got a microphone. I got a cool little interface for my iPad. I'll show you the whole studio setup in a future video. This is part of my Milwaukee pack out thing. I've mentioned this before. This is my socket set. This thing is freaking awesome. I love it. Uh, it's expensive. But it's awesome. Now here's the bottom part. It's got removable trays. I got stuff down here. You don't leave home without a Dremel tool. This is the base that I chose. This one has wheels and handle on it. To make a different one, it has like testers. So you can, uh, but they lock together with a positive click, you know, infinitely portable. You can move the whole thing around. Packing empty box. Hey, you know what I just realized is also in my. Uh, let me go to camera one. My wireless microphone that I forgot to put on. I got the DJI set up. Comes in a little case that will also charge everything. It's two microphones and the receiver. Slick little setup. Um, good range. I watched a bunch of review videos and uh, so far this is the one that made the most oh. sense for my... Okay, I'm all set here. Don't forget to bring a towel.
Man, I have no idea what's going on. This, not everybody has this, especially not a mobile set. That's uh, dirty laundry. I mean, a lot of people have them, but not always in a mesh bag and not always in the, you know, stealth motif like that. I agreed to do this format of video because I kind of like went down the rabbit hole of everyday carry EDC uh, tools and what people carry every day. And so I thought if I'm m morbidly curious about what people carry with them, somebody is curious what I carry with me. This is a toe strap, uh, no hooks, but with a loop, you can attach it to something. Anyway, toast this is a bag of straps, and uh, I had a trailer with me uh, in a motorcycle, and I had uh, to pick up lumber, so I got these little cool strap protectors that go over the edges of lumber so they don't fray your straps, and it's just a bag of straps and stuff. Um, part of the video setup is just this uh, tripod had one of those ring lights on it that people used for taking pictures of eBay stuff and junk. Junk. I usually just clamp on a an LED work light. You know what? I'm not sure where it is. It might be in my tool bag over there. But anyway, and to soften it, I take a a, uh, a Home Depot bag and put it over the light because it diffuses it a little bit and gives it a slightly more amber uh, hue. Which is why in my video kit, I have a Home Depot bag. This is my light filter. In case I want to double filter it. This was a score. I was doing some work and it's dusty as crap, but it's a, uh, it's a nice, well, it's not nice. It will be a nice Pelican case. It still has all its latches and everything. It's not, it's not completely beat up. But all my DeWalt power tools were in a bag. So I just stuck the whole bag in this. And eventually, I want to do cut foam compartments so each power tool has its own slot, you know, and that way when you're, it'll be heavy, but when you've got it tilted up, well, see when you're rolling it this way, oh, this even has a little trigger here. When you're rolling it like this, all your tools won't be banging against each other like they are right now. We'll be transferring to the back of the van in just one minute, but this camping gear, I'm still going to do motorcycle camp setup, but I'm going to start by doing, um, what do you call it? A, uh, a van camp setup. Cause that way, if the sleep system I got is just the worst and I can't get comfortable on the ground, I'll have a backup system I can hit in the van. And uh, maybe I'll prefer van camping to motorcycle camping. That's going to be a, uh, an ASMR, AMSR, SMAR, SR. It's going to be one of those audio response. <sighs> when I travel, I carry, hot, I like hot tea. I like it. So I carry this thing that has my collection of hot teas. I like green tea, black tea. <clears throat> These also belong in the camping here. This is my folding chair and little cook thing. It, it won't be too complicated. It'll be like Hopper's camping adventures or Hopper's gear review or Hopper. We'll think of something. You're going to get the whole behind the scenes. I may be laid up for a bit, so I'm going to grab a I'm going to do some extra footage so I can keep stuff coming, uh, even if I'm laid up. Episodes that might or might not be interesting, may or may not, might 
All right. I'm going to go medieval on your ass. Paint something and then burn it off with an antique blowtorch. Sure. I will never use this thing, but I will never get rid of this thing. It's just a beautiful object. The shape, the, 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 how you fill it, the, how it works with the little pump deal. It's just, I dig it. There's a wasp nest inside. I can't tell. Oh, you can't. Anyway, and this is a touch-up gun. A something 3HTE2 HVLP, which I know that that's high volume, low pressure, but it's Italian. Anyway, I really just thought this screw on regulator will come in handy because we're going to do a paint project and it's sitting over there. Hold on, I'll point the camera. Because at some point, hopefully in the very near future, we're going to do a paint project and it is uh, can you see it? It's just over the top of the mercury. We'll have to make that thing completely death proof. That's your clue. Honey, crunchy peanut butter bread, all important stuff here. This is my second one of these. It's a jump box and an air compressor. And the first one I got worked fine. It's more than that. It's also USB charging. It's a uh, power inverter also. Um, and it's got, of course, LED lights on the front and back. So it's kind of a good thing to have. Like if the power went out in your home, you can use this to charge your telephone. You could even use it to power up uh, small AC things. Like if you had a uh, something small, I don't know. If you wanted to just turn on a fan for a while, you could plug it into this. You wouldn't need a DC powered fan. You can run your regular little you know desk fan just to have some air moving at any rate we're going to try this one if this air compressor craps out then i will give it a bad review until then uh it works fine for jump starting this is part of my video setup this is this is my video light it's very it's bright and it's a little harsh which is why i sometimes put the home depot bag on it oh i forgot to set up the camera b camera Mm-hmm. Okay, that's how I'm setting up, uh, that's how I'm setting up camera two. Uh, an old ammo can. But it doesn't open the way a lot of them do. It's got a side opening and it's just so cool. And sketchbooks, art supplies. This is my art supplies. Another thing I did not find time to do on this trip, art supplies. That's what it is. This bag also clips to the top of that tool system. And uh, this is perfect because you get to what you're doing, you just grab a screwdriver and your drill and your bits and your thing. And then you go back and get your tape measure and you realize you need your reading glasses with the lights on them and you need also one more thing. And then, oh, a little bitty pry bar and then you'll need one thing. And then next thing you know, you got all this crap. Well, then you just take the bag in and put all of it in the bag and take it back at one time. Cause you'll never remember to grab everything and take it to what you're working on. But this will get it all back in one trip. When you're an old dude, it's important to change shoes frequently so your feet don't hurt. So I got tennis shoes, work tennis shoes with insoles. And then for when I'm riding my motorcycle, I got an extra pair of boots. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You know I play the guitar, so inside this uh, ice breaker ice cube, it still smells like chewing gum. I have a plethora of plectrums. You've seen the Mustang. This is the Mustang and uh, I use different picks for different things and uh, this pick it's a limited edition. You can't really get these, so don't you? Maybe you 
Google as you might, you can't find one of these. This is a uh, KW50, and it is a custom pick in every respect, from the color to the lettering, not so much the shape. It's a, it's a heavy gauge, and you might as well be playing with a silver dollar, really. It has a very little flex, but uh, anyway. So these are guitar picks, and they belong in this thing. Here, I'll show you. This is another cool little box that I keep my uh, guitar stuff in. There's a little guitar cleaning cloth. I've got extra strings, um, straps, nine volt battery. This is, uh, it's called a tremolo arm. And it's, it's what you see on the guitar when they do this. protein powder I just it's not that I'm healthy it's just so convenient to be able to mix up a protein shake and uh, convenience is much less of a hassle than things that are not well I guess that's what convenience means never mind um, the uh, adjustment is here as you tighten a screw it will raise a car it's very strong it is the inclined plane, as Archimedes would have been thrilled about. And the more you twist, the higher it goes. And I didn't use it for automotive. Uh, I took a couple of these and put them underneath the subfloor of a house and used them to bring it back up to level. And then I stacked up bricks and shims and kept moving them until the floor was more level and uh, back to uh, feeling stable it was very bouncy and it had a big low spot so that's actually what this was for these are my ac gauges again i thought i'd have time to work on the van i thought it'd be nice to have air conditioning it would have been this is for uh this is a rocajedor de basura uh escoba primarily used for sweeping up small messes and i want to be careful getting this one out This is all the hole saws and bits and drill bits. And you know, when you put a lock set in a door, you have to, this is the template for that. It's also got the wrenches for changing the, this is also saws all blades, um, cut off wheels, grinding blades, whatever. Take 22. First prize is a can of Penetro 90. You want to know what second prize is? Second prize is a set of steak knives. Third prize is you're fired. Um, more camping gear. We've got more camping gear. Yeah. All right, one more bag of camping gear. Now, this is a shaker for the protein shakes, and this is the last of the camping gear. <clears throat> the rest of this stuff is all music related and uh, will be fodder for another video that will be coming up soon um, on my behind the scenes E True Hollywood story of Hopper's High Rods, the making of Director's Cut, special edition. I'm gonna get the rest of this stuff unloaded and then we're gonna check fluids, tire pressure, tire wear, um, tire wear? Tire what? Tire what Um, tire wear. We'll do the litmus configuration. We're back from the extended road trip test drive. Let's check the fluids. Let's check the tire pressure. Let's, uh, you know, check it out. There's really no need to get too in depth, but anytime your rig sees a few thousand miles on the open highway, it's just not a bad idea to give everything a once over. So let's have a look. We'll just start easy. We'll start with the uh, with the coolant. 
because uh, you know it's important to keep things cool. I guess is the oh, it's full. It's so beautiful. I'm gonna get a shot of how beautiful this looks. Come here, look at this. Look how nice that looks. Oh, it's just so pretty in there. That's our new Camaro radiator and cooling fan setup that we, you know, set up. Uh, let's we'll see what we have in the old overflow. Hmm, it looks like it could use a little sip. Um, think about these LS engines. There's a crossover tube and it purges all the air from the top of the heads and takes all the air bubbles out of the system. So when you drain the coolant system or service anything, it's important to check your coolant after you run it a little bit and uh, make sure that it's uh, where it's supposed to be. There's a big window on the side of this thing and I think that's probably where it's supposed to be. So that's where we're going to put it. You know, most good mechanics will tell you that if you remove your dipstick and there's nothing on it, then you're, you need to order a longer dipstick. I mean, most fellas wish they had just a little bit longer dipstick. Look, it's perfect. Look how perfect, look how perfect that is. That is perfect perfection is what that is. Everything's looking good under the hood for right now. I'll still give it a quick check for anything that looks like it's leaking. Any oil around the crankcase ventilation. We'll get it on the lift later and check underneath for anything weird. You think checking the oil and checking the air, you'd be done. Oh, would that it were so simple. Would that it, would that it were so simple. Would that it were so simple. It's complicated. When I'm bearing to the left, the van does this little bit of thing here. Kind of, it's not an ambi turner. It doesn't like to go left. It doesn't feel dangerous, but we're gonna check that really well because this thing's gonna see some more highway driving. We're gonna check the rear end magnetic dipstick again and, and see how much more metal is collected on that, if any. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and check the tire pressure because uh, we're gonna drive this thing across town tomorrow and see some stuff. So let's make sure it doesn't pull left or right due to tire pressure. But right now the alignment feels great. It drives good. This is a vacuum reservoir. It's not cutting it. This cam causes the engine to have a little bit less vacuum. So the brakes are a little hard sometimes. And uh, good Lord, look, <laughs> what are you doing? We're gonna try to keep the vacuum in a reservoir with a, uh, a vacuum reservoir. So let's check the tire pressure, but we're good under here. Air compressor, <coughs> compressor. I've got a nice little air compressor. <clears throat> I've got a nice little compressor, but I'm gonna use this roadside emergency setup to sort of test it out. I tried it out a couple times, but I'm gonna check it five or six times because the first one of these I had, the compressor stopped working. Something came loose. And it's showing 31. I like to run 34. Let's see what happens. And it shuts off automatically when it gets to the correct pressure, which is kind of nice. Set it and forget it. All right. I'm not going to bore you with the other three. I'd times. like to take a moment and thank, well, I wouldn't like to, but the producers would like me to take a moment and thank our 10,000th subscriber to Hopper's Hot Rods. I'm sorry? It's not 10,000. What, 1,000? No? Ah, I'll thank our Patreon, our, uh, no, we don't do none of that. Thanks to those of you who watch. I would then take a moment to thank those who enjoy the blatant 
theft of the Vice Grip Garage format. And I'm not supposed to say that. But if you ever watch Vice Grip Garage, it's the, it, he does this but way better. And he's funny. It's all I can do not to absolutely talk like that guy and say, can a feller get a wrench on a, on a battery? The battery's dead. Any hoose. I love that channel. That guy's great. The dilemma, the, not the dilemma, the uh, decision. I need to be the decider. Uh, we have projects and I can kind of do them in whatever order I feel like uh, because nobody's paying. No money from them. The van, oh, sure, no. The Mercury, boy, I'd like to jump in on that. No money from that. I tell you, I could probably get dough for doing the one that's buried the most. And you know, that wouldn't be a big project. It looks like it's really blown apart, but that one would move pretty quickly. In fact, that's not a bad idea. Hmm. Take 22. I agreed to do this episode, this random episode of Hopper's Hot Rods. Um, I had doubts about doing it, but then I remembered old William Shakespeare said that our doubts are traitors and make us lose the good we oft might win by fearing to attempt. Um, I, I think that was William Shakespeare. It could have been Fred Flintstone. Yeah, he, Fred Flintstone is a man of unsuspected depth, I tell you. And what an actor. At any rate, the next episode might have a point. We'll wait and see. Thank you very much for watching. See you soon. Play us out. Uh, do something.